Okay. All right. It's recording now. Yeah. I'm just going to catch the view here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm speaking to pa Pasha Agos. Is that yeah. the pronunciation, Agus? Yes, Pasha Agus, yeah. yeah. Okay. So thanks for taking the time for, for a C interview on spirituality and communications. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, as an, an assistant instructional professor at the William and Grace Dial Center for Written and Oral Communication at the University of Florida, I understand you teach a post-secondary course on spirituality and commu communications, correct? Yes, and it's actually an undergraduate uh, course. Okay. So, yes, yes, undergraduate. Okay. Yeah. So um, first question is, what would you say is an essential component of the course you teach? An essential component of the course I teach, uh, Rasul, and that's a great question, <laughs> is that the vibration matters more than the words because okay. although i have academic readings i assign you know certain textbooks and i uh, assign different article um, articles for them to read and we'll talk but the most important thing for me throughout the entire course's journey is the energy and that's because uh, words are only the vehicles. And in terms of especially spirituality and communication, mm -hmm. this energy of consciousness, of mindfulness must be at the forefront. So that is what I uh, uh, deem as most essential. And I will communicate this to the students. And the way we make that come alive is that before each class, uh, I will have a uh, a quiet period, okay, and then we'll slowly get out of that and then talk about, you know, the contents of the day, and then we'll end with another quiet period, and I think uh, that is what will bring the class uh, to life, and, and students will uh, benefit most from it that way. Okay, um, and, and these questions are kind of uh, around and above, shall we say, so my sure. next question my next question is, what, would, what do you understand is the difference between the focus of a teacher and the focus of a communications person? Let me take it a could, moment it, to it, honor it, that. Okay, so it could, it could be a difference or it could be a similarity. It's, it's, it's yeah. how you perceive that question. So I, I think the focus of a teacher is I submit to, uh, as part of my pedagogical training, to Paula Freire's notion of the problem uh, posing method, right? So we, we ask a question, right? And then there's an answer, and then we ask another question. So it's a problem posing uh, inquiry. But my focus is not so much to deposit knowledge, although there's some knowledge mm -hmm. involved, but to assist them in discovery. So I am in many ways a facilitator of, this, right. of these discoveries because there can be more than one discovery during a class, right? And so I assist them and I nudge them and I say, oh yeah, so why, why, why is that, you know, you know? And if somebody says something interesting, oh, you know, I wish someone, uh, you know, uh, you know. I was waiting for someone to say that. Right? So I, I nudge these. So it's my role as a teacher is to assist discovery. Okay. And in my role as communicator, uh, and what I love about the field of communication is goes through everything. So if you say, for example, sociology is a study of society, and psychology is a study of the mind, then communication is the field that allows to make the, those things to be understood. Now, how do we come 
to understand sociology through communications. How do we come to understand psychology through communications? Because we connect the words through abstract concepts. We channel it through words. So then the, um, the role of the communication is as the bridge to those discoveries. Okay, great. That, that, that sounds good. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you, um, well, for, for, for a moment, I was thinking communications as techness or technology. Right, right. It's right. is what, is one way of thinking of it, and a lot of people do right, these right. days, but I, there are several facets to communication that, yes. you know, uh, need exploration, shall we say. Right. Okay. So, also, oh, you would like me to explore that a bit? Sure. Okay. So, communication that ends with an N, that talks about the oratory, argument, public speaking, interpersonal communication. So, basically, human communication, right? Right. But if you say communications with an S, then that is where the telecommunications aspects come in technology, satellites, computers, internet, those are communications. Right, so right. Ma many people conflate that because it's only a difference of a letter, right? Yeah. So um, to say I'm a communicate, you know, I'm studying communication and I'm studying communications are two different things. So those exactly. Are, yeah, yeah. Things that I also uh, continually uh, educate my students to and people in different industries who may not be clear about, you know, so what is the, you know, why does it matter to differentiate those two? Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I'm going to ask another question. What, um, what is a memorable reading in a course you teach that you might want students to discuss? And why, why do you consider the reading important? Mm. And then that, that would be more from your point of view, right? Yes, yes. Um, a reading that I find memorable, and I'm also going to, to use this in my spirituality and communications class, a spirituality and communication class, is uh, Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth, uh, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. And I think the world, uh, students, you know, Gen Zs, millennials, they are in dire need of, of these things. And there's a crisis of spirituality and what it means to be human. And these are the things that need to enter uh, more into the mainstream of academia. And the challenge is to convince you know stakeholders that these are not you know woo woo you know uh, or, or kumbaya or this um, kind of things but it has some real needs uh, we we need to consider that uh, we are consciousness and that this human body is simply a vessel and that we are um, simply residing in it temporarily but we are spirits and this is supported by you no know, quantum physics and so these are the things that i want to talk about in class and it has uh, that book to answer your question uh, new earth has had uh, a profound influence on me because it res resonates deeply with my ladihan as a subic practitioner and also i think it needs to be introduced into more uh, mainstream audiences, uh, students who are continually stressed out in academia, continually drinking Red Bull and caffeine to to feel alive. And I want to say, hey, there's another way to feel alive too, you know, and that is by delving deeper within. So that's uh, that's my view. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And another question. What would you say is one of your personal goals in communications? And for example, what ideas about communications have you found in readings that are practical or inspiring or notable for some reason? Right. Actually, uh, 
if I were to answer the textbook way, the academic way, yeah. is to be a competent communicator, which entails two things. A, you are effective, and B, you are appropriate. If I'm effective, but I'm not appropriate, then that's not, it's not, doesn't encompass the full aspect. But if I'm only appropriate, but not effective, that is also not good. So that you can say this one way, but a deeper way in communication is, I see it as a way for you to transfer an energy that is calm, positive, and peaceful to the world. As a Latihan practitioner, I believe that the definition and purpose of a human being is to channel God's power in a way that benefits everything that exists. And we channel that through communications. So communication is has some profound implications for society. And so focusing on content, of course, is important, but the state of being as you communicate those things, that is even more important. And that comes through in oral communication or in written communication. And, and these are things that we need to go deeper uh, as um, the world needs to consider that more and more. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm thinking that there may be some kind of resistance to some of your ideas. You know, yeah. people, <laughs> people might not be, you know, uh, comfortable with with some of you know the results or the effects of some of your ideas about communications mm. um so but i think I, i'm just wondering if you see that as part of a social milieu or a kind of uh an approach to communications that can be explored in terms of um how to make it more efficient or um, a, a, a knowledge of uh, the common forms of communication and why they do or don't work kind of thing, right? Yes. So, yeah. yes. I think um, given my uh, position and my scholarly background, right, and and, and plus my professional background as a corporate consultant for uh, almost two decades, I have some degree of authority to say the things that I'm saying. And I, I use that uh, not in an egoic manner, but to give a foundation to say to those who may object or not like that, I do have some basis and some authority in, in making these arguments. And that this indeed is important. Uh, how kids are now inundated with TikTok, which is ruining, or it's already shown by numerous research, ruining a person's attention span from all ages because of the short form videos. All right. And how focusing on, on, on having a practice that focuses on being in attention but having no thought, but being in attention. Okay? Some people may choose to do meditation. Some people choose to do, you know, ladihan, you know, that kind of thing. But it's um, it's an important concept that will influence communication greatly, and thus it is important. And I argue for a balance. Yes, we need to be clear, find out what works. We need to be make our arguments, you know, the field of sales and marketing, which is communication, will always be there because it's needed for worldly matters. Mm -hmm. But there is another dimension. And I would argue, for example, uh, one of the reasons I was so successful as a corporate communications consultant dealing with Fortune 500 companies for nearly two decades was because I had the Latihan practice. So after a full crazy day, I would go home and do Latihan and it will just cleanse me of all the of all the things that is in here and in here. And then I come out, you know, 
refresh, renewed, while other consumes would revert to other uh, substances, I would just do the larihan and take naps, <laughs> right? And and, All right. and these are these things will uh, practicing uh, spirituality will have tremendous beneficial impacts. I argue for the worldly matters as well that will impact the you know sort of mechanical communication you know aspects of it too because our brain also needs its break it needs to be not in a constant state of stress it needs to expand and contract and expand and contract and having spiritual practice puts all of that in balance okay um yeah no i was thinking of students who are kind of new to university and um, they have to learn new fields of um, terminology and so right, on. And, right. and for them, for them, they are mostly, you know, it's a, it's a form of inundation and, and a, an indoctrination into the a, a practice of, of language, which um, is considered professional. And yes. yet, and yet, they still need to be able to express themselves, um, you know, in a, in in a way that uh, they feel is is confident and um, expressive of their own ideas. Right. Yeah? So that that's what I was thinking may may constitute some of the resistance, not necessarily to the concepts, but to to the practice of communication. Right. Right. So I, I was just kind of wondering if you. Oh sure, sure. And, and if and, you came across that kind of thing. Oh yes. And then I'll tell them. For example, if you want to give a speech, right? You want to be sharp. You want you want to be enthusiastic. You want to be a figure of authority in that particular subject matter during the right. speech, right? And that takes a certain bravado. You know, there's some egoic energy there. Yes, I'm the expert. That. that. So my argument is that is needed in the world. I mean, yeah. that's how I got this job in the first place, <laughs> by communicating in that way in the right, interviews. Right. Uh, right. But underneath that, when you go home, right, when, when, you, when, you, when you are not in those situations, you can have a certain practice that balances you. Yeah. Because you cannot always be too heavy on one side and disregard this. At some point, it will be wobbly, and you right. will experience inner distress. Right. And, and, and I see this in many college students. They're always coming up to me. 85% come to office hours not to discuss school matters, right. but to discuss stress. Yeah. Stress in, uh, they think they should be perfect. They should, worrying about, you know, juggling these personal matters so yeah. I, I feel i'm more like a counselor than a, than a professor often right right because it's such a big part of their lives and, and th these things serves as a another avenue uh i would even argue an antidote no matter what religion they're in to say hey you know there is space you cannot see it but the space exists and you need to let the space enter you. And, and, and that is what I want to remind you is that they have the power to do that. That's good. That's, that's yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask a last question now. And, and that is, um, how does the laddie hand help guide you in making life's decisions? Okay. For me, the laddie hand serves as an all-encompassing aspect of my life that guides in my daily actions as well as my my big goals uh, in life and practicing ladihan for almost 25 years now from my from my 20s and now i'm in my mid 40s i found that it's it's really really useful and and in some ways the Ladi hunt has uh, saved my life right so for me 
to connect to such a, to connect to the power of God is what enables me to make the decisions that are right for me. So the way I use the Latihan is when I'm about to teach a class, I, you know, I get quiet and I say, okay, so how, you know, what, what do we want to talk about today? Right. I have my class plan, but then I put it aside and then I give a space. Maybe I'm going to talk about something totally different. Or if I'm in a meeting, should I say this? Should I say that? Should I hold off on this idea? Or should I, should I promote this idea now? That's all guided by the Ladiha. Or if I'm talking to a friend, or if I'm uh, making a phone call, should I make this phone call or not? Or maybe not? Or should I li live in the US or should I live in Indonesia? Um, my PhD was entirely guided uh, by the Ladihan, and then the mind, you know, executes the guidance, right? Um, right. Yeah, I, I received in the Ladihan, get your PhD. So I did. Right. It wasn't easy, but but it was clear. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after I graduated, I said, okay, so I don't know whether I get a job in the U.S. or Indonesia. So I just did the Ladihan, just put me, you know, I said, you know, dear God, put me in the best place according to your will. And I just did the Ladihan and I just right. sent application all over the world. Right. <laughs> in the US. And then after sending 120 applications, I got a job in Florida. I said, I guess this is it. This is where yeah. God wants me to do good, at least for now. So, yeah. and that's why I'm here. So it's for me, um, it's this process of, triangulation between receiving the Ladihan and also using logic and common sense, but in a way that I cannot always, even up until now, explain completely, it works. So, and I'm grateful for that. And then I'm using the Ladihan now to always uh, help me in making my decisions, uh, you know, life and small, uh, I mean, uh, big and small. Life and right, small. right. Yeah, I, I, I'm also um, reminded uh, of process when you're talking about, um, you know, developing your, your career and so on. Um, and the, the kind of process that Beppa always talk, mentioned was uh, Zat Sifat Asma Afal. Afal, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you may be familiar with those terms. Yes, yeah. yes, I am. Yes, yes. So, so did you want me to talk about that or did you? <laughs> um, well, we're talking in the vein of how the Latian helps guide you in making life's decisions. Yeah, yeah. And in that case, you're, 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 you're able to evaluate, you know, the results of a process. Yes, um, exactly. The af yeah. right? Right. So for me, the af was, uh, I got the PhD, Alhamdulillah. So that's the Afal. And the other Afal is I got this job. Right. So for me, that's proof that the guidance is, is real, you know. And yeah. Then, oh, all right. You know. And so yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't uh relieve you of any of the work involved, but oh, um... no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> that's at least you you here. have a good direction to follow you know yes yes. Okay. yes all right well um that those are the general questions i wanted to ask you about communications and spirituality oh thank you so now, yeah. okay. and and uh, hopefully we can uh, interview some other um professors and teachers as subud members and see some of the the things that they've come to in their in their uh, career okay and and in their approach as educators right right, right. oh i would love to hear uh their yeah. thoughts as well okay yes. so i'll okay. be in touch with you um uh, in the not too distant future okay all right okay. great thank you, you yeah and you can stop the recording now okay let's see okay. oops